continuing on with the setup of the uh, Matec F405 wing flight control board, I just wanted to share a few uh, tricks and gotchas that uh, can frustrate you a little bit. Number one, you need to plug a GPS unit in. Uh, they plug into this one here. And you also need to plug a battery into the board to get the GPS working. Plugging it into your laptop or computer isn't enough to uh, power up the GPS, so you also need to have the battery connected. That um, had me scratching my head for a, an hour or so. And the board won't arm until the GPS acquires enough satellites. So uh, if you're setting up your modes on your laptop in iNav Configurator, uh, you may be frustrated if there aren't enough satellites. Now, also looking at the GPS, this is the unit I'm using. Uh, I don't know enough about GPS units to recommend anything else. I just got this one and it's been working fine for me. Uh, I'll link to it in the description. To plug the GPS in, you need uh, ground, uh, voltage, which is 5 volts, uh, the TX and RX cables. And you have to work out on your GPS unit what colour these wires are. I actually had to open it up and uh, it's printed on the, the board inside. So, and we don't need the compass wires, so the green, and, uh, the green and the second black wire are unnecessary. So with this unit, uh, there's the red wire is voltage or power in, black wire is ground, yellow wire is the TX and orange wire is the RX. And when you're plugging the GPS in, the TX wire has to go to the RX pin, the RX wire has to go to the TX pin. So you have to sort of swap those over in your mind. So I made up this four pin plug and it's a really good idea to get a whole, get a variety of these uh, DuPont connectors, the old three pin servo style is the one we're all familiar with, but four and three pins, uh, four and two pin versions are also very useful. So this four pin plug just plugs straight in uh, just like that and gets everything connected to the right pin. To connect to the receiver, I'm using SBUS. I have a, an FR Sky X8R receiver. The ESC uh, control wire plugs in here to these two pins, the S1 and the ground pin. Normal ESC cable will be something like this with ground, uh, voltage and signal. Uh, but that's not going to work to plug into these two pins here. You need to pull out the centre uh, red wire and move the ground wire over to the centre so that you've got the signal pin and the ground pin side by side and then that will just plug in and be correct polarity. <coughs> and another thing, the camera and the video transmitter pins uh, are on these four here and that's signal, ground, uh, 9 volts and ground. Now if you're just going to use these three, the signal, the ground and the uh, voltage, they're going to be the wrong way around again. Ground and the voltage need to be swapped over. Or you can use the outer ground here with another four pin plug like I've used on the uh, GPS. Uh, so I'm going to use signal, 9 volts and ground with a four pin plug, not using this one here. Because I know if I make up this cable which has the power on the ground swapped over, I'll use it in the future for something else and it'll be wrong and it'll I'll burn out whatever I'm, I'm using. Yeah, so I'm going for connect the camera and the video transmitter. I'm going to have two four pin plugs. I also have flaps on the Volantex Ranger 2000, uh, which I believe I can put them on one of these pins and uh, pass it straight through. I'm yet to work that out, so I may try without flaps first and then investigate that later on. So now I'm ready to set it up in the iNav configurator with my transmitter now that I've bound a receiver to it. And I'm not going to go through the full setup, I've, I've done other videos on that. Uh, but if you're coming at this for the first time you really need to read through the wiki on iNav. It explains absolutely everything you need to do in great detail. Uh, so go and do that first. But what you need to do is set up a basic model with uh, aileron channel 1, elevator channel 2, throttle channel 3, rudder channel 4, just all 100% and no mixing at all. And then you set up 
various mode switches, whichever you want, uh, on channel 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, I use five mode switches. I've shown how to do that in another video, so go and have a look at that. Then go and have a look at the receiver page in the iNav configurator while it's all connected and bound. And you need to make sure that all the values for aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder increase in value when you go up and to the right. So up and to the right, the values have to increase. If they're going the wrong way, then you have to switch the direction of travel in your radio. And on the Tyrannus, you go to the output screen and you uh, cursor across to that little arrow and reverse the direction of the arrow. Make sure that those values now then increase when you go up and to the right with all the sticks. That way the uh, stabilisation will work in the correct direction. And later on when you've connected up all the servos uh, on the model and if the control surfaces are moving in the wrong direction then you change the weight to negative in the servo screen on the iNav configurator. You don't do it in the radio. And that way the control surfaces will move in the correct direction and the compensation or the stabilisation will work in the correct direction too. So I'll go and do that now and uh, next up we'll take it out for a test fly. It's all mounted up in my Volantex Ranger 2000. Nice day for it. There is a bit of wind around and lots of water, but we've got to try it. Now, I just have to wait until the satellites are acquired and make sure everything is working in the right direction. That's correct. Elevator is correct. Rudder is correct. That's manual mode. There we go. We must have enough satellites. Because it won't arm until you get enough satellites. So if the motor's going to work, we're ready to go. Now, check the stabilisation direction. Make sure that's okay. Put it into horizon mode. Lift the wing. And yes, that goes up. So that's good. That goes up. Elevator goes up. Alright. We should be right to go. Wind's coming that way. I'm going to launch it, fly it around, manual mode to start off with. Then just try out the different modes. Let's go. Didn't follow my own advice and give it a decent throw. All right, let's try again. Might as well record on the DVR as well. Here we go. Let's get a bit of height. Trim it. All right. Now, I should trim it mechanically, of course, but that's now flying. Flying pretty well. First thing I might try is return to home. So we'll go out there, hit return to home, and it should come back this way. Climb to 50 metres, circle around above me. Looking like it, it's a bit wobbly, might be a bit nose up, I don't know. That's cool. So return to home seems to be working okay. Back to manual mode. Better get out of the way of that chopper. <laughs> but that's flying pretty well. I need to 
trim it mechanically a bit better. Trim that aileron a bit so it's going a bit, rolling a bit to the right. So I'm going to just adjust that. That's better now. There's wind just as soon as we get over those tree lines, we hit into the wind, so. That's now angle mode, horizon mode. It's actually flying pretty level now. This is flying pretty well, really. I like the presets. They're quite nice in angle mode and horizon mode. I've never liked those modes before much. All right, so that's just air mode now. Angle mode, sorry. Now I need to try altitude hold. Should just stay at that altitude now. Does seem to be doing that pretty well. Turn it around. It's maintaining the altitude very well. Altitude hold plus position hold. So that'll be a loiter mode right about there. The birds are following me. That should stay at that altitude and circle around. And yes, it's doing that. Radius of 40 meters. It's going well. This is working properly. All right, time for some FPV. As this thing comes in and glides and glides and glides. Look at that. Very nice. So, manual mode. Get it up to height. Go for a cruise. Altitude hold. And there we go. That's cool. Air mode, a little bit stabilised. It's going well. I've got the voltage up there. Current, 5 amps. That's great. All right, let's just cruise around. I'll just do it in manual mode, I think. So this is very cool, oh, I've got 22 satellites, that's good, 37% throttle voltage, 30 kilometres an hour, going into the wind, altitude 67 metres, 142 metres away. Let's head out down the field again. Flight time is flashing because I set it as uh, the alarm at 10 minutes. I meant to change that. Altitude, I'll get up to about 70 metres. Altitude hold and just go for a fly down this way. Everything is looking good. Maintaining 74 metres. Uh, I might come home now, hit return to home, descending to 50 metres and levelling out, and cruising on home. I think I can still do a bit of uh, trimming, it's rolling one side a little bit. All right, back to manual. Let's try fail-safe mode. We'll go out here and hit the fail-safe. Keep an eye on the battery. Whoops. All right, so hit the fail-safe now. It should go into return to home. 
go to 50 meters and head back to me, which it looks like it's doing. And you can see it's flashing. You need to hit the sticks to um, get out of failsafe mode. I've turned failsafe off, but it's still in failsafe. Hit the sticks and I've got control again. Altitude hold. Steer it around with rudder. Quite lethargic response to rudder, but that's cool if you're cruising. 1000 milliamp hours. Uh, that's a little bit over on the edge of my goggles. I'm going to have to um, adjust that, I think. Alright, I better bring it home. That's fantastic. Battery's getting low. Look at that. Right back to me. That way. That's fantastic. It's working well. So that's the Matek F405 wing flight control board for aeroplanes. Works really well. Uh, I like all the presets. They seem to be just right for this plane. Yeah, so excellent. Thanks for watching.